I am live. Hi, T. Hi, Maureen. Let me get connected here to my YouTube channel on my iPad so I can see what's happening. Hold on a minute here. There we go. Sorry about the shakiness there. All right. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Anybody want to say something in the chat so I can know that you can hear me? All right. Hi, Pam. She says, hello. Okay, Maureen. Great. Thank you. Hi, Pam. All right. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Hope you all are having a great Sunday and have had a nice weekend. We've had a busy weekend here at our house. So I'm a little bit tired, but <clears throat> I didn't take any nap today. Although if I wasn't doing this live, I think I probably would have. Just I just felt so tired today. Hi, Sandy. Our family reunion was a lot of fun. We had a really nice time. Thank you for asking. Hi, Chow. Hey, everybody, it's Chow. Chow, you're supposed to be on maternity leave. <laughs> Hi, Tanya. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, T. Hi, Sherry. Chow's here. How exciting. Don't forget to go to live chat. Yeah. Oh, she says I couldn't sleep. Aww. Chow's home. So she's probably happy to be in her own bed. Hi, Marva. Oops. Make sure you click live chat, everybody, at the top of your menu there. <clears throat> okay, Sherry, we'll be here. Thanks, Sherry. Hi, Gloria. How are you? So nice of you to join us. Right. I'm just checking my internet connection. Just want to make sure that I'm connected well. Chow is home. Isn't that exciting? Hi, Debbie. Chow did a great job with her delivery and she uh, had her baby and Everybody's doing well. Chow's at home, and hopefully baby will be able to come home soon, too. Baby is doing well. They're just keeping an eye on a couple things, and uh, I'm sure Chow can't wait to bring her home. Kaylin. Kaylin Madison. I almost called her Madison today. All right, well, okay, we've got 18 people watching. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I just wanna say thanks to everybody who jumped on tonight. We're going to be doing a reveal of the new stamps from Technique Junkies. And they have some really cool stamps in this release. Pam, the reason why the baby is, is Kaylin Madison. Uh, Chow's mom was having a little bit of a trouble pronouncing Madison. Um, and so Kaylin it, Kaylin it is, which is my niece's, my great niece's name, Kaylin. So, so Kaylin will be the name. 
and uh, she's adorable. I got to see her on um, FaceTime today, and she's really sweet, so super cute. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Diane. It's a very pretty name. Kaylin, Kaylin Madison. And that's so something because my niece is the same name, but I had never heard of it before. My niece um, named her daughter that. Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead. I'll turn my screen around. We've got 20 people watching. And uh, just give me a second to, to make this go hands down. Well, you'll get to see her soon. Let's just let Chow have a moment to uh, recuperate and feel well and bring baby home. And I'm sure... Before long, we'll be seeing some pictures of her once she's uh, home and with her family. And I'm sure that um, Kyle is super excited to meet his baby sister. Hi, Debbie. Kyle and Kaylin. So that's awesome. They sound, they sound like they're in the beginning of their names are very similar. So that's great. <clears throat> okay, let me make sure my camera is not crooked there. Uh, um, I don't know if you guys got to catch Nancy's live the other night when she showed the new Catherine Puller inks, but she sent um, me a set of them and um, Chow got a set. And the re-inkers as well. So, thanks for getting those to us, Nancy, before you head out to Florida. Nancy and Leah are going on a vacation tomorrow. They're leaving. And they get to go to Disney. So, that'll be so much fun. Yes. Kaylin Madison. Super pretty name. I agree. Um... I'm gonna open these because we might be using them tonight. Um, and it's easier for me to do that right now. I get my lights turned on as well. But we had a really nice family reunion. All of my mom's brothers and sisters were there. Um, several have passed. I mean, a lot, like, a lot have passed away. But the ones that are still with us were there. And they were, it was a great turnout, the best turnout we've had in a while. And um, my Aunt Pearl from Georgia. Hi, Aunt Pearl. She said she watches my YouTube videos, which I wasn't aware that anybody in my family watched. I knew that they commented sometimes whenever I would have a card on Facebook, but I didn't know of any of them watching my videos. So that was super cool that she told me she watched. She thought that I was doing a good job. So thanks, Aunt Pearl. And one of the activities that we have at our family reunion is um, it's called White Elephant Sale. Basically, it's a auction where not um, not like a silent auction, but actually um, um, my brother-in-law, like he was the auctioneer. And you don't know what's in the bags. People just bring stuff. So like for me, I had some bags full of cards that I made. And um, those went to auction off. Yes. Um, not a white, it's, it's called a white elephant sale. And basically um, we, but mostly everybody brings brand new stuff. I know white elephant sale a lot of times would be something from your house that you no longer want or need. But most of the people, like almost all of them, I would say brought brand new stuff. And I brought cards. And so, um, cards and envelopes, I had six per bag. And that all goes back into helping to pay for next year's reunion. So, it just gets to 
yeah, it just gets to um, be used all over again. And it's an auction, so you don't know what you're getting. Everything's in gift bags, and it just goes to the highest bidder. So I bid, I think, and it gets pretty high. I mean, we bid against each other because we know this is a way to make money for the reunion. I think I bid like $10, and I won a big, gigantic container of Cremora and coffee, which I love coffee, so that was right up my alley. And I won some Christmas-oriented type gifts, and I won a container that had like um, a food leftover containers, like the containers it was like a big jumbo box of various sizes of plastic tupperware although it wasn't tupperware brand so that's what i won at my auction and then i brought some things and we had a chinese auction which is uh, where you go and put the little tickets in the little bags and jacob won something at the chinese auction which was a basket and then we have 50 50 too so those are just some of the ways that we try to raise money so that we have the money for the following year to be able to do the family reunion again so i have one more family reunion this year so i have three every year and our next family reunion will be for my husband's family his mom who has passed away she passed away in 2010 it's her side of the family, um, and that will be uh, like the second week, second Saturday of August. So as long as Doug's not working, we'll go. But if he's working, <clears throat> we probably won't be able to go. All right. Yeah, we have a really big family. My mom has 14 in her family. My dad has nine, and Doug's mom had 13 in her family. And Doug's dad only had one brother, so Doug's dad was the one with the small. Um, you should have you should have seen how big our wedding was. You should have seen how many people we had at our wedding. I mean, we probably had 300 people there, so it was a huge get together, a huge party. Speaking of party, this first stamp has some, some ladies who are um, having a good old time. This stamp is called Just Beautiful, and it says, we used to be young and beautiful, now we're just beautiful. And I think that is so cute. Um, love it. And there's two ladies and they're kicking up their heels. Well, one has a cane and one has a purse. And I used some ink smooshing with Catherine Puller inks to create this card. And um, I like how it turned out. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to get a little bit closer. Um, this is a really fun stamp. I I heat embossed this image, which was really easy to heat emboss. Thank you. And then I put the um, ink on my mat and I just smooshed the paper into that ink. But then I took my fan brush and I put um, water on my fan brush and ink, and then I made a bunch of splatters. So that was the fun part. I thought the little splatters really made this card pop. So I was really pleased with how this turned out. And I used the notched edge die, and I used three of the different dies to create a three layer sort of matting. So we've got our panel here, we've got our first mat and our second mat and varying shades of pink. So this is a super fun stamp and I definitely, oh thank you Debbie, I definitely can see sending this out to um, people when we have like snarky cards or just you know fun cards, this would be a good one to send out. Thank you, Tanya. Okay, let's see. Next, we have this beautiful autumn floral mandala, which I think is such a pretty stamp. I think that um, you can do so much with it. Thank you, Melissa. Nancy leaves tomorrow. 
So she's busy packing and getting everything ready, you know, last minute, um, getting things out so she can get head out the door tomorrow for her Disney vacation. So this one's a lot of fun and really pretty. I think you can do a lot with this one. Uh, what I did was I had the gelatos. Do you remember when we were playing with gelatos a while back during one of our stamp wars? Nancy said we had to get either gelatos or distress crayons out. Well, I had a panel that, that I never used. And so I thought that would look really pretty with this stamp because it's, um, I don't know, kind of fall colors. Yeah, thank you, Melissa. And this is called the Autumn Floral Mandala. And um, I just stamped right on top of the panel that I already had. And then I used the Get Well Soon sentiment. This is from a previous release. It's one of my sentiments that I use a lot. So maybe you have received a card from me that said Get Well Soon. And that looks familiar to you. <clears throat> I will show you where that comes from here. Just give me one sec. That comes from Technique Junkies, and it is a very small um, stamp. It's just like, a, a, you know, the, the, the words. So it's not a very big stamp, but it is Get Well Soon. And I just love the font on this one. I use it a lot. Okay, sorry about that, Pam. I'll be more careful. There's a lag, so I can't see what you're seeing until about, I don't know, 60 seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I was trying to get up close so you could see um, the colors in the panel. Hopefully this is better. I'll try not to get so close. Wow, Sherry, we can't wait to see what you color. I hope that you'll post some of your pictures that you color on the FSC. That would be great to be able to see that. Um, we have this really cool fisherman stamp. Uh, it's okay, Pam. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This one is one of those that has like the fade in the background. I'm not really sure what this technique is called, but uh, Technique Junkies has several stamps like with this in the background. So I went ahead. Thanks, Tracy. I bought. Uh, I bought. I didn't buy anything. I had in my stash this watercolor background. This was done just with regular paper, sort of a heavy duty paper, and some Catherine Pooler inks. I just did some ink smooshing, and then I put the panel aside. Hi Lori, and didn't use it until this release. So for this release, more than any, I've used panels that I already had in my stash which I think that's a good thing that you, if you have panels that are in your stash that you can pull from and add them to a stamp and just make that stamp come to life, I think that is, you're ahead of the game. I really do. Anyways, this is Fisherman in Motion. And I had this sentiment, it's called Dream Big. This is also from a previous release from Technique Junkies. And I just turned it sideways just to give it a different look because so many times when we're making our cards, our sentiments are always going horizontal. I, I wanted to do something vertical. And because this is a quite big sentiment, I thought if I turned it in the other direction, it would be taking away from some of this image, which by the way, I heat emboss this with black embossing powder. Hi, Judy. Hi, Mary. Yeah, it's a great way, you know, um, thinking about using up your backgrounds. That's what I, I did a lot of in this. In this release, I did a lot. Um, and then this Dream Big, I also heat embossed this with black embossing powder. And then I just used some Catherine Puller ink. So this is not colored paper. This is white paper, but I tried to do um, with the ink. I tried to pick ink colors that would match this. And I thought I did a pretty good job. It's not an exact match, but I don't think I was going for an exact match. I just wanted something in that same color family. So I used my decal trimmer, and you'll see that I use the decal trimmer a lot 
when I'm trimming a sentiment, I will use the decal trimmer and then I'll do a matte layer and I'll also use the decal trimmer. So if you know anybody that likes to fish or you're thinking about your next masculine card, uh, this is a really great stamp for that. Um, and Technique Junkies actually has a stamp that um, has to do with fishing. And a lot of the design team members for Technique Junkies use that stamp too. Let me see if I can find it here because it was a really cool stamp. I'll tell you what it's called. It's called Born to Fish. And one of the sentiments is Born to Fish. <laughs> well, I don't have that stamp set, so I couldn't use it. So I just said dream big because I guess when you go fishing, you're looking for a big catch, right? Looking for a big catch. So, all right. This also you could, um, if you have a paper that's like a light blue, I think this will look nice on as well. Or if you had your inks and you wanted to blend a background and do um, like an ombre look with blue, blue, you could do that. Um, you could even do it in the golden yellow colors as to signify like a sunrise or a sunset. Okay, so yes, I definitely thought of Nancy when I saw this for sure. And then the other one, like I said, that goes so well with this is called Born to Fish. So that's on my wish list um, the next time I place an order with Technique Junkies. I, and I want to be able to use it with this stamp. But I was pretty excited that um, everything matched so nicely with this one. So that's going to go to Nancy. Okay, and then if you have a tennis lover in your family or somebody who likes sports, this next, um, this is a, these are two stamp sets. Whenever I show these to you, you'll see what I mean. This one is called Tennis Racket Patent. So Tennis Racket Patent. And it's kind of cool. It's got the like diagram sort of style. Um... I know you like Tim Holtz does this a lot with his stamps. So it has the like little measurements of the tennis racket. It says J.L. Kleinman tennis racket filed July 31st, 1926. So I thought that was really cool. Hey, Michelle, that's a great idea. If they had a stamp like that one, but with somebody running, that would be really cool. I know she has one like that with somebody dancing that shows the motion, sort of. Uh, I know there's another one, too, but I don't think it's of somebody running. I'm just drawing a blank. I, I know I've seen three in that same style as the Born to Fish, uh, a Fisherman in Motion. So this kind of style with the motion. I, oh, a baseball player. Um, uh, there's one that's a baseball play. A ba bla ah, I can't talk. But baseball. Let me see if I can find it here on the website. I'll tell you which one it is. It's like baseball. Maybe it's called baseball. It's called baseball in motion. <laughs> and it has a person who is batting. A, um, a really cool stamp. That's where I first saw this look. So there's the baseball in motion. There's a dancer, I think, which it's really cool. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, it's, it's called No One Is Watching. And it has the sentiment. It says, dance like no one is watching. So that's a fun one, too. Uh, that was from last month, I believe. But yeah, if they had a runner, that would look great. I think that would be a very popular one because a lot of people love to run. Uh, they like to run not only as a student, you know, like you said, your son is a competitive runner, you know, from middle school to college, but there's a lot of people that incorporate running into their everyday activity. You know, it's a very healthy thing to do and releases a lot of good endorphins and whatnot. But this is a really fun stamp. It's got all kinds of little um, 
it's like the name of the inventor down here, the name of the attorney. It's got these little figures and, and such. So um, it goes along with this set of three tennis sentiments. And um, they say, tennis is my favorite season. You only live once, but you get to serve twice. And kiss my ace, which is so cute. Kiss my ace. It just reminds me of uh, Flo on Mel's, the television show that used to be on back in the 80s. She would always say, kiss my grits. Remember that? Well, this is kiss my ace. How cute. So what I did, I went with sort of an Americana look for this. Just because that tennis racket patent to me was sort of antique -y sort of looking. So what I did was I used my cream colored cardstock that's got a linen type look to it. And then I stamped the tennis racket patent with uh, some Catherine Puller ink sandcastle which is a brown. Oh, thank you, T. And then I used the sentiment, you only live once, but you get to serve twice. Uh, and then I stamped that also with a Catherine Puller icing on the cake. And then I took um, the ink dauber from um, scrap, scrapbook.com. This is the domed foam blending um, tool. Yeah, definitely, Mary. And then with my decal trimmer being my edge, I was able to put a nice brown edge around there to give it sort of like a distressed look. That's what I was going for. Americana, distressed type thing. And then with my paper having the stars and the stripes, I have this um, paper that's kind of old. I've had it in my stash for a while. And I've used it a couple times with Technique Junkie stamps. And I just thought that it tied in really well with sort of like the old time feeling of this um, tennis racket. But you could definitely pick any of these sentiments. And yeah, I was really happy with how this turned out. Then I used craft cardstock just so that it would look, um, you know, very... Um, I just call it Americana. I don't know what else to call it. To me, that's what it looks like. I was really pleased with how this little card turned out. So that one goes into the super happy, cute card pile. All right. So um, there were lots of beach themed stamps in the last two releases. And this set of Adirondack chairs just reminds me of the beach so much. But it also reminds me of just being on the porch and taking an afternoon siesta and or maybe sitting on the porch in the evening as the temperatures drop and you're enjoying, you know, the cool air. That just is what this reminded me of. Um, and I love the sentiment. It says, you have enough, you do enough, you are enough. Relax. So that one I thought was just spot on. I think you have a friend who might be going through a lot. This is a great one to share. Um, just, you know, it's an encouraging, it's an encouraging card. Yeah. <laughs> Cooling off on Thanksgiving. Well, I, I'm afraid where I live, if I sat out on the front porch after Thanksgiving, I might have to wear my um, winter clothes where I live because it gets really cold in the mountains. It's very rare that we have a Thanksgiving that would be would be warm enough for us to be outside. But definitely, yeah, need a glass of wine, sitting around the fire at night, right? Chilling back. But it reminded me of the beach because I, I see this a lot when we go to the beach. So I decided to go with a bright theme for my, I made three cards and I went with a rainbow, sort of bright theme. I should have just made one more than I would have had a four pack. So the first one is pink and it's really simple. I just used a um, rounded edge, stitch edged die to um, cut out my panel and I just used black ink. 
And then I just had this pattern paper that had the rainbow, um, like, they're not chevrons. They're um, like a, a stitched pattern. And I, again, use that same die, but one size bigger or two sizes bigger, actually. So I thought that was fun and bright and cheerful for summertime. And then I did this one with yellow. It is so quick and easy. <coughs> Excuse me. Sort of a gold color yellow. And then I have the rainbows. These are actual rainbows in the background. Little mini rainbows in the background. And then finally, of course, I did one in purple and it has the rainbow stripes. So these are really cheerful, uh, pick me up, I think, cards. Super simple to create and didn't take any time at all to put together, but they're just so cheerful. And I think the rainbow really goes really well with that colorful paper. Well, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, the purple is so cool too. Yeah, Mary, thanks. Yeah, I did round the corners because I thought, you know, these chairs have a rounded uh, back to them. These nice big Adirondack chairs. So relaxing, definitely. We all need to relax more, right? Speaking of relaxing, who can resist a hammock swing? Look at this. I love this one. And um, it has a sentiment, and it says, relax your body, calm your mind, renew your spirit. Okay, great words of advice for uh, us in our busy lives, our fast-paced lives. Um, I've never personally owned a hammock, but I know people that have them and they love them. Um, they certainly relax on them and... I think there's just something about being outside and taking a nap on a nice day that's so relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> Tracy's like, please send me a hammock. I'd love to try one for you. So, all right. So what I did, I had this die that, I don't know why there's a piece of glue stuck here. I had this die that is sort of a lattice die. Yeah, Michelle, I probably would fall out too. I don't think I could balance myself very well. Anyways, I cut it twice. The first time I cut it with a turquoise blue color and the second time with a craft card. It just reminded me of sort of whenever you think of lattice, like around the deck. Um, sometimes people will put this lattice down at the bottom. That's what that reminded me of. Thanks, Tracy. And I thought that was kind of interesting for sort of a back background because I don't have trees that are die cuts. All of my trees are stamps. And then what I did was I did have these tree, um, I, they're not full blown trees. They're just basically birch tree trunks. That's what they are, birch tree trunks, okay? Hold on one second. Okay, hello, Biddy Penny, how are you? And I thought that was fun just to hang the hammock from the two poles or whatever. The only thing I would do different, I would probably stamp this in a brown color instead of black. I don't know, the black just a little, looked a little bit harsh to me after I did this. One thing I did was I heat embossed the hammock and did sort of an emboss resist so I went in with Catherine Puller ink, um, icing on the cake, and used my brush to color that. And then I used some other color ink. I don't remember which color I used right now, but I just used that for the uh, sentiment. And I just kind of trimmed around the words. So now there's a lot you can do with this stamp. You could die cut it with an oval. I think that will look really nice. And you could um, leave it, if you do it on colored paper, you wouldn't necessarily have to color it. You could leave it, say you had like a light blue colored paper, you could heat emboss it with black, like with an oval, and then the oval would be the centerpiece of your card. Maybe you could have some pattern paper in the background. I think that would look nice too by itself. 
but I only got a chance to make one card with this stamp, but I could see making a lot more because I think that hammock is super cool. And you don't necessarily have to have the tree trunks to balance it out because, I mean, it is card making. It's basically, you know, open for your um, interpretation and it can be abstract. It doesn't have to be so concrete. And a lot of the design team members who use this stamp, they didn't have like trees on the sides. They just had them, you know, just sort of floating there and it looked great. Um, their cards turned out really nice. Hi, Deborah Littlefield. How are you? Thank you for joining us. This one is one of my absolute favorites from this release. I love this stamp. I love this sentiment and I love the way my card turned out. Okay. So, um, we've got this beautiful, um, set of hiking boots. I know T I knew you'd love this. And it's the Wildflower Hiking Boots. I love this one. And I thought, well, you know, that's a lot of coloring. And it's got a lot of detail. But what if I heat embossed it and, uh, and just did some uh, water brush with my Catherine Puller inks? So that's what I did. I, I heat embossed it with black embossing powder. Thank you. And then I just used my like Catherine Puller ink. So like I used Pucker Up and I used um, Serenade, not Serenade. Which one did I use? I used, um, oh yeah, Serenade. Yep. And I just took a water brush and I just dipped it in the lid. So I was able to get some of that ink up and then I just colored in the flowers. There's only a couple of the flowers that are full bloom. The rest are mostly buds. And then I grabbed some ink. I think, um, I know it was Catherine Puller ink. Um, the one about um, in the park. Yeah, in the park. And I just also colored that background in. I used some browns from Catherine Puller to do the boots and the laces. But I also added a bit of Shimmering Bliss Spray. I'll hold it closer. I try not to go off the screen here. Hold on one second. I used a little bit of Shimmering Bliss so that I could make the shoelaces a little bit metallic, a little bit stand out. Yes. Yep, I knew you'd love this one, T, because of the boots. And they're so cute. They've got flowers all around them. Isn't they awesome? Yeah, so I just grabbed some Shimmering Bliss Spray. If you're not familiar with it, it's a product made by Technique Junkies. And you spray it on your panel or you can spray it in your ink. So say, let me show you what I did. What I did was I just took a little block a little ink block or something like something that you, I mean, a stamp block, something that you can use as your palette, basically. And this one's called Mixed Metals. And that's, I use this one a lot because it's kind of got a champagne look to it. But it's a super pretty um, shimmering bliss spray. And here's what I do I'll either take ink, um, ink refill, or I'll just rub some ink onto a acrylic acrylic block so let me just get this stuff out of the way so I can show you so and here's what you can do you can also just do it straight on your um, mat too you don't have to do it this way and if you have a glass mat you can just do it straight on your glass mat <clears throat> and then I'll just flick a little bit of this um, onto my um, paint, not my paint, but my ink. I'll just dribble a little of this on. Okay. Whoa, that was a whole lot. I didn't mean for that much to come out of my bottle. All right. And then I will take a brush. This is gonna just grab my paper towel and then I'll just take a brush 
and swirl those two together. And now I have that beautiful watercolor, right? Um, you've got your regular ink and then you've got your shimmering bliss. And I don't know if you can see all that shimmer or not. I can't lift it up for fear that I'll spill it, but I'll grab a watercolor panel and I'll drip it on there. At least I'll do that. We can look at that together. So let me just grab one of my panels here um, from my watercolor stash. <clears throat> well, it's not a full size panel, it's a partial panel. Whatever, you, I'm just doing this to show you how I did my watercolor painting. So because I had this, I could paint with it. And that's what I did with those boots. I actually painted the flowers with, um, you know, my regular ink and I added Shimmering Bliss to it. And you can add Shimmering Bliss to any colors that you would like. I just picked that mixed metal. So let's try to dump this on here without getting it all over my fingers. This is gonna be interesting, you guys. But I'm gonna try to do it. Ha ha, there we go. Okay, and I'll hold it up closer to the camera. Just give me a second to uh, color my panel real quick. I'll hold it closer to the camera in a second. But yeah, you can use your Shimmering Bliss to make a mica watercolor, a metallic watercolor. So I'll just go ahead and let that color there. So that's how I did that. And let me just show you how much mica is left on this block. That just goes to show you how much mica is put in the Shimmering Bliss Spray. Okay, it's also great for flicking. Flick, 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 flick. The flicks are beautiful, you guys. These flicks are gorgeous. Where do you see this? Okay, so. Yes, that is fun to splatter. Fun, fun, fun. Then you have splatters that have um, that shimmering bliss to it. Of course, it's pretty wet right now, so you might not be able to catch all that um, mica, but it certainly will look great once it dries. Um, and then I can use this for another card project. Yeah, it's not nice saturation. That ink is um, such a high quality ink. It's a dye-based ink, so any any dye-based ink, I'm sure, would have, you know, very similar properties. So let's just wipe my mat up. Since I made a mess, I wasn't planning on making such a mess. <laughs> but it's fun. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and I'll clean this up later. So that's how I'm colored my boot, my boots and the flowers, right? That's why I was showing you that because I used that technique. I mean, you really can't see the shimmer except for on those laces. They're very metallic looking. It is a lot of fun. I just, I need to be prepared for it mentally. It's going to be like, I'm gonna go in there and make a mess tonight. <laughs> yes. And um, the sentiment is, the world reveals itself to those who travel on foot. Okay. And that's a, a quote stamp. What did I just sit on? I'm in my watercolor paper pad. I just sat on it. Okay. Yeah, if you guys um, are wondering, Tracy just put the um, 
link in for Technique Junkies. And just so you know, all of the new stamps that I'm showing you right now are 15% off until August the 8th. And then if you use my coupon code, you can get 15% off anything else that is ordered. And I have that down in the description box. In case you're wondering what my code is, I'm just gonna post it right here. So all of the new release stamps are 15% off through August the 8th. And then use my coupon code TJ10Tracy for 10% off anything else ordered. Okay, let's take another look at this before we go on to the next one. I'll tell you how I finished this off. So I, I did an ombre background, and if you look at the other design team members, most of their cards are this direction, which makes sense because this is a pretty big stamp. So they were putting the boots down here and the sentiment above, or they were putting the boots this way and the sentiment below. But I guess for some reason, I was just thinking about, you know, most of my cards I make are this direction, um, like a horizontal orientation. So of course, naturally my mind went there. But what I did was I just took some white, just regular white card paper, card stock. I stamped the sentiment, which is in this really cool font, by the way. I think that's an awesome font. And then I just put it in the middle to create like a banner going across the middle. And then I've got that nice ink blending, which I love to do ink blending. And these are all Catherine Pooler inks that I, that I did with my ink blending. Hi, Pam. Oh, hi, Lisa. <laughs> Pam's been here. I already said hi to Pam. I'll say hi to her again. No problem. Oh, thank you, T. You already had that code listed there. I, I totally missed it. All right, this one is so much fun. Um, and I, I tell you, I had a lot of fun creating this card, all right? So this is one of those awesome, snarky, Technique Junkie sentiments that Pat is very well known for. Pat is the owner of um, Technique Junkies. This one is called Patience Tested. I've had my patience tested. I'm negative, all right? I love it. And I just thought about this sentiment and I thought, how in the world can I do something that keeps the focus on the sentiment? Because I was worried about making a real busy background that it would take away from the sentiment. I thought, I wanna keep this card like clean and simple. So what I did was, oh, thanks everyone. What I did was I grabbed some good old fashioned graph paper. So I don't know if any of you still have any of that floating around in your house but I used the graph paper, and this is a stencil. This is one of the new stencils from A Colorful Life Design. It's one of the mountain edgers. So even though what I have it looking like is sort of the results of a heart uh, monitor. So I was thinking about that. Whenever you are on a heart monitor machine, um, it shows you know the up and down beats or whatever. And then I said, okay, well, the stamp is actually one part. So the stamp is, I've had my patients tested on negative, but I did a little stamp surgery. I cut the stamp apart and then I put, I had my patients tested and then I put I'm negative underneath. I was trying to be a little bit more dramatic by having it separated onto two different um, lines of text. So when your stamp comes, it's going to just be one single stamp. It'll say, I've had my patients tested, I'm negative, but I cut mine into two so that I could do um, the separation with the line in between. Such a simple card. I mean, so simple. It's graph paper with black cardstock on a white card base and basically does the sentiment stamped. Couldn't be more simple than that. And if you don't have this stencil, you can just draw your lines yourself, obviously. But I wanted to do it in red. So I have a red um, fine tipped um, gel pen. And I did that. Hi Kay, thank you. Um, and um, tomorrow night on my channel, tomorrow night at seven o'clock, I'll be doing a, an unveiling of all of the new 
amazing stencils from A Colorful Life Designs. I'm telling you, these are game changers. Why? Because they're layering. Oh yeah, I've heard of layering stencils before. Oh yeah, everybody has. Oh no, these are scene building with your with making layers. And um, they go together so well, all the different components. And it's not just one or two. Some of these have six different layers. So you're getting that depth, um, that depth of field. And when I do my live tomorrow night, I'll show you some of the cards that I made with the new stencils from A Colorful Life. But I also um, want to make some live with you because I didn't get through the entire collection. And so I really want to spend some time playing with them live so you can see how they're used. So I just want to say, hi, Michelle. I just want to say, you know, stay tuned for tomorrow night. It's going to be amazing. Um, Pat, who is the owner of Technique Junkies, and Mary Kay, who is the owner of A Colorful Life Designs. They're really good friends. So um, they do a lot of work together. And I thought that they would get a kick out of me putting this um, stencil to use with one of Pat's sentiments. It is at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. That's okay, Donna. We're so glad you're here. I'm so glad that you joined us. Thanks, everybody, who's just jumping on right now. It's awesome to see you all. How many days have you thought, I've had my patience tested, I'm negative? Yeah, I've definitely felt that way before. <laughs> I felt that way before a lot, for sure. Okay. It's a great snarky stamp set. Okay. I'm going to show you this next one, which I think is great for everyday thank you cards, but also awesome, I think, for Thanksgiving. I know it seems to be too soon to be thinking about Thanksgiving. But really, um, it's an awesome wheat-themed card. I mean, stamp. So it's called Life's Little Blessings. And it says, be grateful every day for life's little blessings. Which I do like that sentiment a lot. And I thought, well, this is another sort of a, you know, a smaller stamp. And I really want the focus to be on that sentiment. So what I did... <clears throat> I used gold embossing powder, um, and I made two, and they're very similar. This one has a pattern. It has the uh, mat underneath of it. But I used um, a Sizzix 3D embossing folder, the one that has the swirls. Um, <laughs> okay. The older I get, my patience is diminishing. That's so funny. And I just ink blended this with Catherine Puller inks. I used an orange piece of cardstock for my mat and then gold foil. I took gold uh, cardstock, gold foil cardstock, and I ran it through my um, machine with this 3D embossing folder. <laughs> no, I don't think I said squirrel. <laughs> but I just think it's super pretty. And I think that would be a fantastic card to give to somebody as a thank you card or just to let you know that you think that they're a great person. And, oh, oh, swirls. No, I said swirls. I didn't say squirrels. Oh, my gosh. Now I am thinking about squirrels. <laughs> Look at the way that gold cardstock just... That foil... It, Taking your embossing folders and, and using foil cardstock, that's the trick of, oh, of Stacy uh, from our um, FSC, FSC group. She does a really, a lot of her cards, she'll, she'll foil, take the foil cardstock and the embossing powder, embossing folders, the 3D embossing folders, and it really makes it pop. The wheat stalks, um, I know that when my sister died, the um, one of the things that we had 
was like this arrangement of weeks wheat stalks it kind of looked like a fan or whatever and it does have a significance and it was something that we put in her casket and it was from my 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 son and my nephew um it was significant there is a significance in the wheat stalks i know sometimes you'll see them with um if you go to the funeral home and somebody has passed away a lot of times they give you those little um, little um, programs and sometimes they'll have picture of wheat on front of it. So there's definitely the significance of wheat, but I just can't remember. Yeah. All right, Laura Ann. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Laura Ann. I appreciate it. So yeah, this one is a really sweet little sentiment. Um, these wheat stops. I can't say it. Wheat stalks are really detailed. Even if you just uh, stamp those out with black ink, and that would look really cool. You could um, stamp them out with black ink, let the ink dry, and then just do a subtle ink blending around them, just around the wheat, sort of like in a wheat colored ink, or an ink that's sort of like a honey colored. You can even use Distress Oxide, like Fossilized Amber. Okay. All right, Michelle. Thank you. Oh, okay. T. That makes sense. That makes sense. I know the um, wheat arrangement that was put in her casket was, um, it had like a little card that explained you know, what it meant, what it signified, like the wheat and why sometimes you'll see that at a funeral. And the funeral director said that he recommends it for people. If they have somebody in the family that wants to give some kind of like memento, like that's just from them. And because Jacob and Brandon were so young when Chris passed away, it was kind of nice that they had their own special thing that they could um, have for her. So... That's that. All right. Now, how many of you love your mushrooms? So we joke a lot about mushrooms in the FSC because one of our other um, lovely stamp companies, Local King Rubber Stamp, has magic mushrooms. So you'll hear us talking a lot about them. But these are actually the kind of mushrooms and a snail. I love the snail. Um, the, these um, are the kind you would find in your garden or the forest. So this stamp is called Forest Floor. So adorable. So pretty. And that line art. I know, Mary. Look at it. Look at that line art and how much detail is in this stamp. Um, that's something that I fell in love with when I saw this stamp. So, I grabbed, again, a watercolor background that I had made in the past. I used uh, Catherine Puller inks. I did some ink smooshing and on, on watercolor. And I just came up with this background, sort of an abstract background. Put it aside. Never used it until when I was working on this. And I thought, well, it's supposed to be the forest floor. And I know mushrooms aren't green, not necessarily. Most of the mushrooms around here are like a tan color. But I thought, wouldn't it be fun to uh, have it in this color scheme so that um, it reflected the forest? Thank you, Mary. And, you know, a lot of the other people on the design team had the same idea because a lot of them did some ink smooshing and created um, a card like with a very similar look is what I mean. Uh, different maybe color schemes, but very similar. However, if you don't like that abstract, you can always color these mushrooms. You could color them. You could use colored pencil. You can use alcohol, you know, markers. Um, I think you could also use the technique where you color directly on the stamp and then stamp over to your paper. 
So it's basically coloring your stamp. You could use that technique too. Okay, well, <laughs> I like the slug. I mean, I know you don't like slugs, but I thought that was really cute. I just used this really tiny sentiment and it's from an awesome stamp set from Technique Junkies because it has, um, it's called Dream, Hope, Wonder, Wish, all right? So it's just one of those smaller sentiment stamps and each stamp is its own individual stamp. I mean, each sentiment is its own individual stamp, all right? So like this one says dream. Okay, this one says dream, right? So um, that's nice because then you can pick and choose which sentiments you like. I used wonder twice with this release. But anyways, what I did was I just used some Catherine Puller ink and I just colored that white paper. It was white paper originally. And then I just went around the edge with my deckle trimmer. And then I just used um, another color ink, brown, a brown color, probably Sandcastle. And I just ink blended the outside. And then I used some foil card. So this is that Tim Holtz foil card that's sort of like a muted foil card stock. And I thought it matched really well. Yeah, I thought it matched really well with the colors in this background panel. So yeah, that was fun. That was a fun one to do. And there's like so many possibilities you can do. Oh, hi, Nancy. How are you? I love the deckle trimmer. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. I can't tell you how much I love the deckle trimmer. You'll see almost every sentiment that I have, I cut out with the deckle trimmer. Why? Well, you know, you can buy special dyes that are made for your um, sentiments. But what I found was sometimes they're either too thick or they're too short or they're too long. With the deckle trimmer, you can cut it to whatever size you need. And you can cut it so close to that word. You can get real close. So I made mine, you know, to have a little bit of space around the word but you can get real close to that word and you can make it as small or as wide as you wish. Um, and then you can always ink blend the sides. So it's definitely worth it. I used it um, on a couple of my panels too. And I'll show you that in a minute here. Okay, speaking of the deco trimmer. Okay, so this one is called Lavender Collage. Um, so there's a lot going on in this, so I just wanna walk you through it real quick. Oh, it would be cute with fairies. Yep, that would be really cute with fairies. Yeah. Yep, definitely. And Nancy says she loves the deckle trimmer too. So you look at this card here. I used the deckle trimmer on the panel. Then I used it on the sentiment. And then I used it again on the matte layer. So I pull it out all the time. And this panel was another one done with gelatos, but I took black gouache and I, I made all kinds of specks all over the panel. I don't know if you guys remember that night when we were doing that, because I was like, oh my gosh, why did I, hi Meg, why did I put, hi Ellen. I thought to myself, why did I put black spl splotches or splashes all over this panel? Well, now I know why, because it was gonna be used one day for this background stamp. It goes so well. So this stamp has all kinds of beautiful flowers. It has a couple butterflies, so butterfly here, here. There's another one here. It has a bee. So if you look real close, you can see the bee. It's got, there's another butterfly there, several different types of flowers. Oh my gosh, Mary, you're cracking me up, girl. 
that is exactly what happened. Oh my gosh, Mary. So if you're, if you're using the deckle trimmer and your husband is asleep in the house or your spouse or your significant other um, or anybody in your family is asleep in the house, don't use your deckle don't. <laughs> don't use your deckle trimmer. <laughs> oh my gosh, Mary. I could just see him jumping off the couch and screaming. <laughs> what the hell was that? Because it's so loud. It sounds like bone crunching, okay? And you can't be quiet with that tool. Like being quiet in the deckle trimmer. They do not go hand in hand. Hi, Melody. So glad that you're here. We're talking about the deckle trimmer, how loud it is. So one night, my husband was asleep, and my craft room is right beside our bedroom. And I mean, I was going to town with the deckle trimmer. I was. I had a bunch of panels, and I was going to deckle trim all of them. I was, ma I was making... Oh, great, Ellen. Thank you. I was making... I don't know, a marathon batch of cards. So, here's me. Listen to that, you guys. Listen to that sound. Right? Okay? Okay, hi, Jim. So, I was doing this over and over again. And, and it was loud. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Even when you try to be quiet and go slow, it's louder. Okay? Yes, I agree with you. But you definitely want to have some respect for the people in your household. And maybe not do that when they're sleeping. So, <laughs> my husband was in the other room. And he, I guess he hollered at me three times till I finally heard him. He said, hey, what's going on over there? And then I didn't hear him. And he said, hey, I said, what's going on over there? I didn't hear him. And then the next time he said, what are you doing over there? He, like, he said it like as loud as he possibly could, like really loud, you know, and he didn't know what it was. So I stopped after that. I said, sorry. <laughs> It's also a great way if you know people are sleeping in your house and you want to wake them up. <laughs> oh, Michelle, Melissa, that is so funny that your husband said that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, and I was just doing it on my live. So if your husbands are asleep in the room beside you, I probably just woke them all up. Sorry, Meg says. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Oh my God, the deckle trimmer. Yeah, it's a great tool, but it's loud, loud. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to do it silently. Oh yes, Kay says she's gonna get it just to make that noise. For that alone, everybody should have a deckle trimmer. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh boy. Oh. Tears in my eyes, tears in my eyes over that one. That was funny. Well, and then the next day, we were talking about it and <laughs> laughing because he was like, what in the heck do you have in your craft room that makes that god-awful sound, right? And then I'm like, I'm sorry, I wasn't even thinking about how loud it was. <laughs> and I'm like, Jacob, did you hear it too? And Because his room is on the other side of my craft room. And he's like, yeah, Mom, it was loud. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you go, uh, uh, Pam. It's it's a great deterrent for guests who have overstayed their welcome. You got that right. You guys are so funny. We're going to get it just so you can make that noise. All right, so this one was another. I, I, I know I sound like a broken record, but it was a panel that I made before. And I didn't do anything with it. But it was a panel that I made using Catherine Puller inks. This was um, Serenade and then um, Cove Blue and then, um, I don't know, that's Cove Blue. 
and then down here I used sea glass so it was the darker colors and then you know how I showed you earlier about the shimmering bliss sprays all right so I took the shimmering bliss spray and I put a little bit in like a, on a piece of acrylic block or whatever or like a little well on your palette I just poured a little I, sh I made sure that it was mixed thoroughly and the mica was mixed thoroughly and I poured a little bit in my palette and then I took my paintbrush and I just dabbed all over that panel because the Catherine Polar inks are water reactive and the shimmering bliss sprays are made of water and mica so if you see those spots in the background what they're made of is shimmering bliss and a paintbrush that's all that is and um, some of them got really big and bloomed that means I had more water on my paintbrush and I like using this paintbrush to do that because it's got I don't know because of the way it's rounded at the end I like this paintbrush to do that so I would just go over my my panel and I would just dab um, that and my paintbrush would be really really wet and it would then bloom and it would make those nice spots right yeah you're right Mary I'm telling you it was a real lifesaver for me because I had super busy um, yeah this is the brush that I normally use to dab like what I call it is to it's making spots um, so Melissa, when I made these backgrounds, I probably wasn't making a video at the time. Um, but it's not hard for me to make backgrounds. I really love to do ink blending and like to do things with my ink in the background. So I could do a video just on making backgrounds, not a problem. Um, I did some videos on like how I made these cards and assembled them. And it was sort of a video saying, you know, oh, yes, Melissa, I would love to do that. I love making backgrounds. I'll, I'll show you how to make a background either using your foam dome blending tool or your brushes, your um, ink blending brushes or a magic mushroom. So using those different um, tools, you can make all kinds of different backgrounds. If you only have a brush, a blending brush, that's fine. I can talk about the different kind of papers you could use for your backgrounds. And also I will stress the importance of using a lot, um, like using a juicy ink. Yes, I would love to do a video for that. Yep. Okay, sounds good. Let's do it. We'll schedule that. Now that, um, Right now, you know, with child being on maternity leave and Nancy's going on vacation, this would be a really good week for me to do that. So let's think about that and we'll figure out a time this week that we can get that, that video in. Um, because it's fun. I love making backgrounds. Um, for me, it's a way to like de-stress after a hectic day. Just sit down, play with the ink, make some backgrounds, a lot of fun. And actually, when Nancy came to my house um, and she was helping me get organized, she had a really great suggestion. And she said, you know, you should have a place where you keep all your backgrounds. It should be not that they're scattered everywhere or across your craft room. I had a couple in this box, a couple in that box. What you're seeing is I was able to pull my backgrounds together and start categorizing them um, I'm not there yet. I'm getting there. But um, it helped me to remember the backgrounds that I had. Because I don't have like a central repository for all my backgrounds. And I think that is something that you have to have. So I'll talk about that too. But yeah, if you guys are interested, I'd, I'd love to do a, a video on that. I certainly have enough background stamps to then finish the cards with as well. Oh, you can also use pan pastels to make beautiful backgrounds, too. I don't want to forget about that. You can use gelatos. You can use distressed crayons. Yeah, I know a little bit about backgrounds. It's like one of my favorite things to do. So I love this color. Obviously, I'm partial to purple. 
So I took and I just had this purple butterfly in my stash and I cut it out and then I cut my, you know, word, my word is wonder and I used some purple foil behind that. Oh, sure. It's called Technique Junkies. I'm a member of the Technique Junkies design team. And today I'm showing you the new release that they came out with. This whole basket is all Technique Junkie new release for the month of August. And on my channel, the first day of the month. So it's always on the first, whether it be a Monday or a Sunday or a Saturday. Um, I do a live reveal of the Technic Junkie stamps. And I show you how I have used um, the Technic Junkie stamps projects, how I've created cards with them. So that's what we're doing today. We're doing the uh, Technic Junkies new release. This is a beautiful stamp. I kind of got off um, um, I kind of got off the topic there when I started talking about the deco trimmer, but it's one of my most favorite things to talk about. It's so funny. Crunch, 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 crunch. Okay. Here's a beautiful stamp that I didn't get to use that much. And I was asking Nancy how she would use this stamp. So this one's called Lighthouse on the Cliff. And last month, we received another stamp that goes very well with it, and it's called Light, Lighthouse Sentiments, all right? So for my card, I, yeah, I used a Shimmering Bliss background. You can use Shimmering Blisses to create backgrounds. I'm going to put that on my list, too, of how to make backgrounds. This panel is nothing but Shimmering Bliss. It's basically a white piece of paper that I sprayed with Shimmering Bliss. Um, the color that I used, and I also, um, I think I used, not Mermaid, but it's called Ocean Depth. This is the Shimmering Bliss that I used on this one. Isn't that a beautiful blue? It's so pretty. And if, in case you weren't here earlier, I'll show you a little bit about the Shimmering Bliss. So it's a product that Technic Junkies created and makes and manufactures, and it has a lot of mica in it. And then you spray it on your projects, and you have then this color along with the um, mica to it. Thanks, Tanya. It was nice to hang out with you. And then I put this holographic, rainbow holographic, um, silver paper in the back and then my sentiment is backed with this real pretty silver um, paper and then I just did it in white and I put the blue that cove blue around it and then I used one of the stamps from the lighthouse sentiments yes Sherry you do have to spray it with hairspray so that's one thing you can do to keep it from rubbing off on your hands you can spray it with hairspray but, you know, I mean, unless you vigorously rub it, I mean, it's not going to, like, go over your hands. I have used Shimmering Bliss both with and without hairspray. It's not as if there's this huge amount of fallout that happens once it's dry. But we had uh, Pat Huntoon on one of our Stamp With Me's, and she showed us how she... She'll take her panel, yep, and she'll spray it with Aquanet. She will, um, she'll apply the Shimmering Bliss, and even while it's still wet, she sprays it with the Aquanet, and that helps to set it so that, you know, if your person would happen to really rub the card really hard, which I'm not sure why anybody would want to rub a greeting card really hard anyways, uh, but yeah. So, don't panic. If you made a card once using Shimmering Bliss, and you didn't, <laughs> you didn't spray it with Aquanet afterwards, it's okay. It's not as if there's going to be this huge amount of fall off. But some of us are OCD, and yeah, I, and I totally get it. Now, I spray mine all the time. But you don't, like, don't feel like you are, if you're the kind of person that doesn't like hairspray, and you don't want to smell hairspray, you don't have to do it. 
Okay, but what I was saying was, um, the paper that she used was watercolor paper. She sprayed it with Shimmering Bliss and the paper was still wet and then she sprayed it with hairspray. She did not re-soak it afterwards, no. But that's a good question, Jim. So these sentiments are so much fun. And this is from the previous release, Lighthouse Sentiments. Uh, let me be your lighthouse. Let light shine out of the darkness. Let your light shine. You are a lighthouse in the storm of life. I'd be lost without you. And you have the most amazing ability to take the most ordinary moment and make it shine. And um, there's just a lot of possibilities with this background stamp. And if you combine it with this sentiment set, you're gonna get a lot of use out of it, I think. Um, I like this one, I'd be lost without you. It's a great friendship sentiment, as well as like your spouse or whatever, a parent, you know, a loved one. Um, just definitely someone that you know, you know, is part of your life and you wanna let them know. Um, Michelle, there's some really great sentiments over at Technique Junkies. You definitely need to check it out. Uh, there's everything from snarky to serious. Um, and a lot of them come in a pack of five. So you're getting more than one at, at a time that are kind of related to the same theme. But um, just this one, let light shine out of the darkness. I mean, if you know somebody who's struggling with, um, you know, a sadness in their life right now, that's a great sentiment. Yeah, the peace set. That's a really good one, T. I like that one, too. I think I know which one you're talking about. Let me pull it out here. Also, what I could do, and Nancy helped me with this one, is to somehow do a mask and have the light from the lighthouse shining out from the lighthouse. And then I could use the sentiment, let your light shine. Wouldn't that be nice? I think that would be great. Okay, this is one that has five different main sentiments, but then they're individual. So there's 10 stamps all together. So love, joy, faith, hope, peace. And then you can interchange these. So it says love makes our friends a little dearer. You can switch them around. Joy makes our hearts a little lighter. Faith makes our paths a little clearer. Hope makes our lives a little brighter. And peace brings us all a little nearer. So, yeah, you could use the... Oh, that's a great one, Kay. Yep. Hi, Cheryl. You can use these by themselves. So, like faith, love, joy. Um, you could use faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love together. You could use peace for Christmas. Um, but yeah, so they've got great sentiments and they've got lots of nice snarky ones. Well, they're not nice, they're snarky, so. But they are fun. So that's one I wanted to show you that I have found to be a good one for sure. Okay, so yes, with this lighthouse, I feel like I need to make more cards with this lighthouse. Yep. They also have different snarky stamps, lots of those too. But um, I thought maybe some pan pastels in the background would look great. And um, again, having the light shining out so somehow. So this is the lighthouse, have it a nighttime scene, and then having the beacon sort of shining out from that. Um, let me look here. I don't know that anybody on the design team did that this time around. I'm gonna look. Uh, no, I don't see any that are like that this time. So I definitely wanna try that. So be on the lookout. I'll be making a video later on this month with this stamp set and I'll definitely make it so that the light is shining out. I do have the Sunray stencil. Yes, I have several of those. Yes, that's true, I could use that 
for my, um, yep. You can even use the sun rays panel, like as the sunrise coming up or the sunset in the background. That would look pretty too. Good idea. Okay. See, you guys are thinking too, like how could you use this? You can mask it off before using the pan pastels or erase afterwards. Yep, I think the mask would be really good because then you would have that solid area because if you're doing a nighttime sky, it's going to be a blue color or a purple color probably. And then you want your light to be like a beacon. Um, you can also think about doing just a nighttime sky with a bunch of stars in it. And you could use um, one of these sentiments or you can make it like a stormy sky in the background. And this sentiment, you are a lighthouse in the storm of life and you could make it. So there's lots of possibilities with this um, stamp. And I, I feel like I just scratched the surface when I made this card, but I like this card. I think it turned out really nice. So that's that one. Yeah, there's one that says about fishing and it has a fishing boat. Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier. Let me see if I can find it here. It's called Born to Fish. And it has four different fishing sentiments. And then at the bottom, it has a person on a boat fishing and it's a, it's a silhouette stamp. So it's got the cat tails, it's got the lake, it has the trees and it has the person sitting on the boat. So that's a really good um, one. It's called Born to Fish. Okay, we're on our last stamp set. This one is called Leopard Set of Six. And this is the card that I created. And it says, life is too short for boring clothes. It's very simple to create this card and you could use it in any colors. Um, thank you. You, uh, I heat embossed the stamp. So the stamp, uh, the stamp can go in any direction that you want it to go. It's a nice big stamp. So that's what I did. I um, laid it on my panel like this, and then I heat embossed it with black um, embossing powder. Okay, and then um, just used some Catching Rays ink by Catherine Puller, and just did a real simple, um, thanks Pam, see you later, um, simple ink blending resist. I also, um, heat embossed or I embossed the sentiment life is too short for boring clothes and I used my deco trimmer again yes good catch while I was at it I just stamped out all the sentiments because I think I could use them like this one that says stay wild you could use that um on lots of different cards this one says as far as I'm concerned leopard is a neutral this one says, Leopard is my favorite color. And the other one says, Roar, like, a, like an animal growling. See, Roar. And this reminds me of the Katy Perry song, The Eye of the Tiger. Um, I am a fighter and you're going to hear me roar. I like that. Although it's not exactly the same because she's probably saying R-O-A-R. -R, you're going to hear me roar. But when I saw that sentiment, I thought of that song. So it's got one, two, three, four. It's got five sentiments and one stamp. All right. And you could use any color for your, you know, your leopard print. You could do purple, pink, um, you know, yellow like I did. Any colors, anything that you had in mind or maybe you have somebody who has a favorite color, this would be a fun one to make a card using this um, leopard sort of pattern. And again, you can send it in any direction you want. You could stamp it going in different directions all the way around your card. Yeah, I was trying to go with the color of a leopard, but you know, and, and you see this in fashion. 
you'll see a certain animal print done in different colors. So the pink and the purple kind of came to mind. But you could uh, repeat the pattern. So um, you could like stamp it here. That way you'd have more of a full on um, completely covered panel. You do that too. Yeah, <laughs> a rainbow, yes, why not? There's a lot of possibilities. So, oh, I see the other sentiment in here. So that's all I have for tonight, you guys. I really wanted to show you um, the new release for August and ask that if you are interested in checking out Technique Junkies, that you use my affiliate code, which is my design team code. Um, the new stamps that I showed you tonight, they're 15% off until August the 8th. Um, after that, they go back to their normal price. My coupon code will give you 10% off everything else. You, you're not able to use my coupon code on the new releases, but we looked at a lot of sentiments tonight that are not part of the new release. And anything that's not part of the new release, you can use my code to save 10% off. So I appreciate in advance those of you that um, do that and um, certainly appreciate all of you watching tonight. And um, so for the new release, uh, we all automatically participate in a blog. So my blog today has two different cards on it. And so we all get a flat rate for the new release as part of uh, being on the design team. So we're not getting an affiliate um, commission by participating and showing off the new release, but we are getting um, that flat payment that Pat gives us right off the bat for being part of the hop. So by me doing my blog today, I have two cards that I featured on my hop. Yeah. Um, that takes care of that. And I always tell people, if you're just buying all new stamps, you can just mention my name in the comment section. That way Pat knows that you heard about it by watching my live. I'm not going to get any credit, but at least it shows her that by me doing the lives, people are watching and then they're going and checking out her website. So, um, that's always helpful. I appreciate that so much. Again, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, same bat channel, same bat place. We will get together and have so much fun with the colorful life designs stencils that are amazing. Let me just show you real quick sneak peek at one of my cards that I made. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with these stencils so much. Now this is one that I made using the new mountains. Um from the new uh, release. And then the, they come together so well. And I use the cloud edger up here. And then these are stamps from uh, Stampscapes. So I'm able to use stamps from other companies when I make a design for a Colorful Life design. Um, that's nice to be able to do that. And this mountain I can't wait to show you another way to use it. The, um, the mountain, um, edger stencil set. So yeah, tune in for tomorrow night. I'm looking forward to hanging out with you all again tomorrow night. And, um, then later on this week, we will play with our backgrounds and have some fun. Um, all the different, all the different background techniques. Yes, that is deckled, Michelle. Of course it is. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the deckle trimmer. But I'll make a list of all the different techniques that I have used to make backgrounds. And um, we'll, we'll do that later on this week, too. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you have a great night. And I appreciate you all watching. Thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. We'll see ya.